a solar powered fountain. You basically just dump this little thing into the water and oh, here comes a kitty. And it uses any light available to either run continuously as it's doing at the moment in the sunshine or if there's not quite as much sunshine about it will run in little bursts it seems to sort of store a charge up and then run and it comes with various heads shall we take it apart yes we shall here's what happens when it's in a shaded area it doesn't quite muster up the full power to do a spray but it does pulse and you see little bursts of water come out the middle of it and this is what it looks like with the spray nozzles off and just the water coming out directly from the pump Back at the bench, things may sound very slightly different. The things may look slightly different as well. It's a different camera I'm recording with. So it comes in a box like this. The packaging consists of a little bag of fountain nozzles and some foam in the front, presumably to protect the solar panels and also to make sure it stays relatively square inside the box. The unit is plastic, as you'd expect. It has a dish with the solar modules. Now, let's see. Uh, where do they start? There, there's the start of the circuit. So I don't know if you're going to see this because it is basically jet black solar modules and a jet black background. That's not great for, uh, for visibility. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 solar uh, modules. I'd say they're about 15 millimeter by, say, 45 millimeter. Going by the size, I'd guess that these are probably 200 milliamp cells. They just look that. When you compare them to, for instance, uh, one of the many sort of generic fiberglass backed solar panels, it, these, this one's rated about 100 milliamps and it looks about twice the sort of area on here. So I'd say 200 milliamps. One slight downside is that I'm always cautious about the use of the solar panels laid into plastic and then covering the resin because in the early days of doing that, some of the solar lights, they, when they heated up, the coefficient of expansion of the hard silicon and the soft plastic caused it to actually distort, sort of like a bimetallic strip, and it cracked the solar panels. But I don't know if that's going to happen with this one, particularly because effectively it is kind of water-cooled. So it's got uh, 14 solar panels, each is about half volts, I'd say 7 volts at about 200 milliamps. On the back is a little junction box. Uh, 7 volts, 200 milliamps, yep, 1.4 watts. Okay, waterhead 55 centimetres, that's about right as well because I've tested that. On the back, it's got the junction box, which uh, there, I don't know if there's something else in here. I'm guessing it's potted and resin. We'll find out because I'm going to break it open. Uh, and there's a tiny little pump. So let's take the pump apart first, shall we? The pump has this little clip here that can be swung to the side or up, removed completely. And it's a very, very standard little pump. When I, let's zoom down in this, unfortunately it's all black, which is never terribly helpful, but you know what, that's what we've got. Uh, let me bring in something to focus at a specific height. Let's uh, focus on that. The pump has an end cap, which pulls off. It's a very common arrangement, these little, it just clips on. And once you're inside there, You've got this little cover here, which also you can hook your finger under the edge of it. And you can pull. Yeah, this is very black. The water uh, control port is the best way I'd describe it. Uh, to reveal the impeller inside. If you grab the impeller and gently pull with these things, no force required. It's a brushless motor, basically. The... Com the motor is actually in the form of windings in here, which is unfortunately it's all potted in red, and so I can't really show you that. All that's in here is a shaft that is fixed, and the magnet here that uh, is controlled by the coils inside to actually make it spin. Very, very simple to take apart. Very simple to put together again. That means there's no seals, so it's got a very efficient, there's nothing, no friction. Um, and also it keeps it completely waterproof because the inside of this, you can see the resin there. It's just completely potted. I'm not even sure how I'd get that out. Resin is always a bit of a, a nuisance when they pot things in it. Likewise, I've got a horrible feeling this thing's going to have resin in it. But we'll find out because I'm about to pop the lid on it. 
It was Mike of Mike's Electric Stuff who uh, mentioned this in the first place, by the way. This particular little pump, and I've looked at them in the past, but I've never actually bought one. Now this is going to burst off, but that's okay. I didn't expect to come out. If it's manufactured in the usual way, it will have uh, little stems on the side of this lid that go into the resin. So I would expect it not to come off easily. Usually they pot it in the resin and then it's got little bits that go into the resin too to hold it in. So yeah, it's all potted in resin. So I don't know if there's anything in here other than the solar panel. Is there any active voltage regulation or circuitry? I really haven't a clue. The only way I could find out is by lopping this wire off, which I could lop the wire off. It, it's a bit destructive, but you know what? That's why I got this, isn't it? So let's test this. Not sure what tests I'm going to actually do in it. I shall nibble around this wire. That's it completely non-washproof now. And I'll try and strip that off to reveal the cores. Um, I could see if there's just a simple capacitor across it because I, I do notice that the pump... Sorry, this is a very black video. This is the peril of everything being black. Did I mention this uh, closed cell foam flotation ring? So the, the whole thing itself is fairly flat except for the box and pump. But then this ring is actually stuck into a sort of recess in it to actually keep it floating at the correct height. Closed cell because that's the uh, system that water won't absorb into the foam theoretically. It's lots of little sort of pockets of air which makes it float without uh, bogging up like a sponge and then sinking. Which should be kind of counterproductive for a fountain. I'm going to zoom back out here. I'm not really sure what to test here. Let's bring in the little dinky meter and check voltage first. So I'm going to put these clips on. I'm going to set it to 20 volts because I reckon it's going to be about 7. Then I'm going to hold this up to the light. Seven volts. Would I be right in saying there was delay there? There is a capacitor in there. Okay. Because when I held this up, it didn't, let's uh, focus down on the meter, it didn't just go straight up. It should have rocketed straight up there, but it took a delay. Right, so I reckon there's a capacitor in there. Um, we could check that with a capacitance tester. So I do have a dedicated capacitance tester. Where is my capacitance tester? It's not where it should be. One moment, please. Well, there is a capacitor inside, but it's a bit more complex than that. The capacitance tester would not see the capacitance. However, I've connected an LED to the output, and if you watch the LED as I hold it up towards the light to harvest some light, you'll see that the LED... Hold on, I should actually... Do it. Uh, every so often it, it pump, it charges that capacitor up and then once it reaches a voltage threshold, it's pulsing the output and then enabling it until the voltage drops off again. I'm guessing the reason for that is to avoid a situation that as the voltage to the pump rises slowly, it doesn't start. And you may have seen that with things like uh, computer fans. If you're big, the ones that are electronically commutated, if you, you get them to a sort of balanced position, if you ramp the voltage up slowly, they don't start. That trigger system, that pulse that is effectively giving it a boost uh, is the difference between being able to start this at low light levels and not. So let's find out how much current the pump takes. I shall use this dinky little meter since it's handy. Let's turn it to optimistically to 200 milliamps. Let's turn the voltage to 7 volts. Yeah, that's what the panel's put now. I'm not sure if that's what actually goes down to the actual to the output, but that's what we're getting. So I shall connect this to here. I shall connect the negative to the negative there, and I'll connect the through the meter to here. The pump is running at 30 milliamps. 
that seems low. What about if that load is putting it, let's uh, open it up and give it a bit more, uh, if I can get it open, give it a bit of resistance. Well, the current does fly up with the uh, stalled state. Oh, out of range with the stalled state. Okay. So yeah, it is uh, load dependent. So it won't be 30 milliamps. It will be whatever it takes just to push that water. Okay, that's interesting. Get that back on, get the little cover back on. Right, what else can I cover here? I can show you the nozzles that come with this. I'll turn the power to the pump off, get the meter out of the way. I'm just experimenting the setup. I've not finalized how I'm using this new device, which is incidentally an Honor ATX. So far, so good. It's like most devices, it's quirky. It does run with open camera, but uh, you have to enable a uh, API 2, is it? The other advanced camera settings, but the app itself that comes with the phone can record bench type videos because you can put it to professional mode. You can lock exposure, you can lock color temp balance and things like that, the automatic white balance. Um, and you can actually do manual focus, which is really important at the bench. However, it when you every time you go into that, you then have to set those modes. You have to set everything afresh every time you start, which is something that the open camera just stores your last settings. Nozzle heads. You get a little extension piece. That couples onto the back of that. Uh, would this fit in this? No. Yes, it does, kind of. But it is designed to go on there. Uh, the simplest one is just this little nozzle here, which has five holes now, like a sort of dice-like. Uh, I'll, I'll zoom down, that's the best bet. Let's put it down there and focus on that. That that didn't work at all, did it? Right, I have to get used to this. But you can see five holes in that. Uh, let's give this some to focus on, and then I'll try again. I'm, as I say, I'm getting used to this. Does look super sharp because I, I thought it would have been sharper when I was zoomed in like that. But as I say, I have to get used to the settings. It is theoretically a 20 megapixel camera. So uh, the base nozzle comes with the five holes. And this one is best probably suited to getting the highest jet out of water. Uh, the other ones, there's two with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven holes in them, a central hole and then uh, six outer holes. And the difference between them is that uh, this one has smaller holes, so it'll put a higher fountain spray, where this one is larger holes, so it'll be lower, but a higher set of volume of water. And the final nozzle has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 12, 13 holes uh, of a sort of, sort of smallish size, so it'll just put an awful lot of small jets up to actually give a decent fountain effect. Or you can do what I did earlier on, you can just have the bare nozzle stick out and the water will just bubble out the top. But it, it works very well. Oh, I should mention that this uh, also goes on the top. You've got a choice of either stacking it on here or probably putting it straight in there. Yep. And this uh, lets you clip these nozzles into it like that. They just, uh, they're a press fit. All in all, it works quite well. It's a nice solar panel. It's quite useful. It is a water resilient solar panel. It's probably got other uses and it's got that interesting potted in capacitor and pulse circuit to give that uh, circuit a boost when it starts. The pump itself is very good. It's very common of these type of little low voltage pumps. You get them that operate on USB power supplies and they all operate in the same principle, the magnetic uh, field rotating to actually make the internal, the impeller spin. And all potted in resin. Everything's potted in resin here. It just means I can't explore it as deeply as I'd have wanted to. So there we go. Um, as I say, I'll be experimenting more with this, more with this camera to get a feel for its uh, strengths and weaknesses. Certainly when you put a, something with good sharp contrast under it. Let me bring in something with good sharp contrast. Like a circuit board like this. And you zoom down because it gives very good zoom and you focus. It seems to lock pretty well. Maybe not that well. I have to experiment with this. I've not I've not mastered it yet. This Every phone has its little learning curve for the best way to actually use the camera app for the best results. But there we have it. Uh, solar powered, waterproof, 
fountain, well I should hope it's waterproof, that just floats in the water and squirts water when it's uh, fairly bright and it doesn't need direct sunshine. A fairly bright day will make it work as well. And these things aren't that expensive because they are absolutely mass produced. Just type solar fountain on eBay and you'll find them. It's pretty neat. I like it.